Hi, my name is pretty simple. Uh, hello, my name is Kyle Reiner, and we're going to be giving a presentation on the lost treasure for our FYS 100 class. So, when Minton and I set out to make this game, um, we started out with kind of a rocky game, but once we started developing it, we got positive feedback. We really wanted to turn it into like a legitimate game that people would enjoy playing. And while we wanted it to be made for all audiences, we did target the college age group just with the competitive aspect of it. So when we got our reviews back and we kind of came together to make the final product, we really wanted to put together the best game we could. So by taking our advice, this is what we came up with. So this is The Lost Treasure. Uh, the game mechanics and setup. So as you can see behind me, um, referring back to when we learned about game mechanics, one of the big concepts was that you wanted to have more than one mechanic. But it wasn't about the number, it was about the quality. So we took two game mechanics, trick taking and take that. And what they do is they kind of mesh together really well. So what trick taking is, Vincent will get into it later, but it's kind of just this. It's following a suit, which is a specific card. We'll play around and show you better what it is later. But it's following a specific suit with a deck in your hand. So if you have, if the card played is an ace of diamonds, you're going to want to have the king of diamonds, basically. And then from there, every card down, you're going to want to have the highest card value in a round, and that's how you're going to win the round. Take that, take that is where we kind of think our game is entertaining. Take that is the way to be more involved with the game because there are some games that aren't too fun because you just play the game and you're kind of in your own world and then your opponents are doing their own thing. Take that uh, through special cards that we made in our game allows you to interact with the other players by negatively impacting our game. So it's a way to kind of, rather than just have three people playing separate games, it brings everyone together on the board, which we think makes it more interesting. Uh, as you can see right there, we did have a board game. We did have a board for the game. Vince will get deeper into detail there. And then one of the unique things about our game is that it is specifically a three-person game. It's not two, it's not four, it's three. So the storyline. Uh, our story is from the 18th century. It's uh, news came out about a treasure, a abandoned treasure on the island, and the three biggest kingdoms: British, France, and Spain. Uh, all wanted to get the treasure, obviously. So immediately, the rulers put together fleets to go find the treasure. What they were not expecting was all the other kingdoms to find out. So not only are they trying to get there, they're trying to fight and defeat their enemies on the way there. And the end goal of the game is to, to find the treasure. And it's not, it's basically all we have for that. Uh, the materials, Vincent will cover that. So, like for our game material, like uh, we pick up the international poker without the joker, like it's the like regular poker we can find like in Warma and in Stuart. And then additionally, we add the like the eight power cards, which is those like those Kraken cards as our power card. Like uh, we use this as our take that mechanism. And then also we, as we can see, it's a board game, so we definitely design a board for it. And then, as you can see, each like area represents different country here. And then, like uh, since there's uh, like uh, three player games, like uh, we do have three like uh, tokens for that. And then after that, we have a uh, one dice to determine like uh, which player go first, like at the beginning of the round. Like uh, as you can see, the Kraken card here, like uh, those. Quick a card here, like uh, we pick since like it's about the 18th century, like uh, navies fighting each other. So we think for an interesting creature, like uh, there's a misery creature among that area time, which is the misery kraken, a giant octopus who tore the shit down. So we use this like as our like uh, offensive, uh, like um, character for the take that mechanism. So speak to the, since we have the uh, offensive like uh, uh, character for our take down mechanism, we definitely need a uh, like, uh, defensive mechanism to make the game more interesting, like, so you can have more interaction. We don't want a dominating strategy, like if you, like, uh, I don't want just like one player can get one card and then he can only attack and the other player can not do anything. So we create a Kraken D for our like defensive mechanism for the take that mechanism. So also we like uh, we have uh, this board here. Like uh, the setup is quite easy. You can see like uh, I write a uh, like the country be like beside each like uh, little self ship here. It represent each country here. So basically you just need to put a token nearby those uh, self ship. 
and then as the game begins, like uh, if someone won a room, they can just move the each token like each move like uh, further on the those little circle here, those column here, and then like uh, the dice will put in middle to determine who goes the game first. Yeah, I'll just talk about the die real quick because we didn't cover that too much. Uh, it's simple, but just to start out a game, uh, all three players roll a die, highest roll will go first. Okay, so talking about the aces. So, ace, in most games, either the highest or lowest value card, we decided to make it the highest value card. And as the highest value card, we wanted to add some kind of uh, power to it. So, since there are three aces, there are four aces and three uh, kingdoms, we decided that each kingdom was going to have its own ace. And what that means is, since um, since the ace is the highest card in the game, let's say the suit is any heart. If you have the ace of hearts, you physically cannot be beaten around. So it's kind of a, just a card, it's kind of a dominating strategy, but it can't really be changed because it comes in the standard poker deck. So what we decided to do is, each country, so ace of hearts is Britain, ace of diamonds is France, and ace of Spades is uh, Spain, and what we wanted to do there is we decided that referring back to Ace of Hearts is Britain. Um, in any given round, if you were to win, to win the round, you get to move forward one space. But what we decided to do was that if Britain, who owns the Ace of Hearts, wins a round with an Ace of Hearts, they get to go forward two spaces. But with the leftover Ace, which is the Ace of the Clubs, um, that's free game. So anybody that wins a round with the Ace of Clubs can move forward two spaces. Um, so a hand here, we'll go into a round there, we have hands pretty determined, but just, it's pretty standard, one of the, we'll get into the changes of the deck later, but um, it's just a standard deck, you get draw, distributed four cards, and there you play out the round, and it, the cards are dealt kind of clockwise. Alright, so now Vince and I are going to play a round, uh, we'll pick up cards to show you as we go, but uh, just starting out this round, uh, the trump card is the queen of diamonds. So, um, following suit, I'm going to go first because I rolled a better die, and I have three of diamonds, which since it is a uh, queen of diamonds, that is going to follow suit, so that's the current leader. Uh, Vincent will go, and then I will put a, like, a three of card. So, Vincent put down a three of uh, spades, and we both have the same face value, we both have three, but since mine is a diamond, which follows suit, and his is the spade, which doesn't, mine's the clear winner. Uh, so, next I'm going to put down a... Uh, Ten of clubs. So this is kind of just to show an example. Even though this is significantly higher than the three of diamonds, again, just referring back to the trump card, the three of diamonds is still the winner right now because it's the only card with a diamond on the board. And then again, okay, so Vincent just took the lead with the nine of diamonds because that clearly trumps my that clearly trumps my three of diamonds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put down the 10 of diamonds and I'm going to retake the lead. And then this is to put down his card. Neither one of us have another diamond card, so in reality I won the round with the 10 of queens, with the 10 of diamonds, so we'll just keep it there. But again, just similar, it doesn't matter if it's a face value or anything. See, my he put down a king of clubs, which in theory is the highest card on the board, but again, just referring back to the fact that this 10 of diamonds is the highest value diamond card on the board, I would win and I would progress forward on the board. And then the winner of the round can move forward one space, that's what I say, if not on this like specific situation. So like as you can see, what's the trump card here? Refer like he's explained very clear previously. Like uh, you can see the trump card is nine of heart here. So like uh, among all those three cards, seven of card might be not since the highest value, but it's only card that follows the suit of trump. So you will win automatic for this round since like it's the only card that follows it. Okay, and then like the uh, use of Kraken card. Like, uh, use of Kraken card is like, you want to use that when you can, like, guarantee that you can win this round 100%, like, as what this player demonstrate here. Like, he's the only one, like, who can, who has a card that, like, uh, follow the suit of the Trump while he's winning this round. 
So he used a Kraken card. That means he can guarantee he can win this round. So how do you do, how to use Kraken card is that you can like uh, it's a special power card that can force your opponent to move backward. Like uh, you designate one of the opponent. Not like because you have free pay again, so you like uh, force any of the opponent if you sit like if he's moved forward too fast, so you want to pull him back a little bit, so you can be the winner. At the same time, you can move one space forward while you put your opponent one space like uh, backward. That's how the Kraken card works. Now, just it's here you see pros and cons. So just basically a simple summary, the pro would be if you were to win a round with the Kraken card, you do get to move forward while knocking someone back. But Vincent said, which is very true, you want to make sure you win the round because the negative, the con of a Kraken card is that if you play a Kraken card and you lose a round, you yourself have to move back with space. So uh, the Kraken defense card, Vince already showed you a picture of it. So again, this was not in the original prototype of the game. This was added after we got our reviews. Um, the Kraken defense card, there are only two in the deck, so they are hard to come by. But they're not a hidden card. The Kraken card you will play as a normal card throughout the round. The first rule of the Kraken defense card is that as soon as you're drawn a Kraken defense card, you place it in front of you so the table can see that you have a Kraken defense card. That way you get your fourth card to actually play throughout the round. So, uh, the Kraken card is not used, uh, the Kraken card's not, the, the, how long you can use it is not based on when it's activated, but just duration. So, um, instead of making it a card that you keep in front of you until it's activated, because if you had a Kraken defense card in front of you the entire time, uh, and just never had it used on you, that would be kind of a dominating strategy because no one could ever attack you. So we decided that it's going to last two rounds no matter what. It doesn't matter if there are two Kraken cards played that round or zero Kraken cards. After two rounds, the Kraken defense card has to get sent into the discard pile. So how to win this game is like, uh, it's already very self-explanatory at the beginning. Like uh, the free, like uh, navies, the navy represent different countries try to reach the center, like uh, eventually get a treasure of this game. But you, it's not always the case because, like, as what we observe, like, uh, during the uh, review for like public playtest, most of players cannot finish the game on time. So, like, uh, there are other ways to win, like, such as like uh, the closest, like, the one who's the most closest to the treasure will win automatically. Automatically, so like, uh, there's a situation like uh, what to do in type. So we decide like uh, at like uh, an another round, we should shuffle the whole deck again, and then play until a winner is find it join again. Yeah, um, that was unclear when we were talking about what he means by shuffling in the adjustment slide. So um, starting with deck change. Uh, originally in our game, we had three cards in a hand, not four. And we kind of found that to be uninteresting because when only nine cards are dealt, or granted, the jump from nine to 12 is not significant. But when only nine cards are dealt, there are going to be multiple rounds in a game where there's only like one card that follows the suit, maybe two. So we didn't really, we wanted there to be lead changes throughout the rounds, so it would be interesting. It's not fun if the first card that is drawn that's the same, uh, same suit wins every time. No one would want to play that. So we decided to jump it from nine cards to 12 by giving every player four. Uh, the new card, um, in the original game, we had four Kraken cards, but people seemed to really enjoy the Kraken card. So we added two extra to bring it to a total of six. But at the same time, we added those two Kraken defense cards, bringing the total to eight special cards. Um, this is what I meant by I was playing later, the extra shuffle here. Um, so what Vincent said, the game can end, at a, uh, end before it really gets to the center. Uh, we wanted this to be a game that we know college kids don't have all day to play Monopoly on a Wednesday night. Uh, we know they don't have time to take three hours out of their day to play a board game. We wanted this to be a quick, easy, fun game. So our games average between 25 and 35 minutes. Um, so what we did was, when we first made the game, it was the cards would be shuffled, distributed, run out. You would shuffle it once, and then when those cards were done, the game was over. But we noticed that like more than half of our games were ending prematurely that way. So we added in a second shuffle, so now the cards would be shuffled two times throughout the game which gives you a whole other deck of cards to play with, which isn't going to always end in someone reaching the center, but it greatly increases the odds. And then, uh, more elaborate board. I, don't, uh, I can go... I can go back 
So really that was the original board, and then we just decided that we wanted to make a more professional board. So we decided to indicate which country goes where. Um, we better documented the path they will travel. Just little things for aesthetics. And then these are our references. Uh, if anybody has any questions or wants to see me play around through again, that'd be fine. Other than that, that's all we have. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.